Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you what it would be like to touch a piece of dark matter. Now dark matter makes up 85% of the matter in our universe. And I happen to have a very dense piece of dark matter to show you what it would be like to touch it. Here we go. Huh. Now the problem with dark matter is that you can't touch it or interact with it in any way except through one force and that's gravity. So we're lucky today because this specific piece of dark matter is extremely dense. So even though I can't feel it or interact with it, I can feel its gravity. So for example, let's say I take this pair of scissors and I drop it near the dark mass. Well, the gravity from the dark mass should pull it in towards the center. Let's see what happens. Three, two, one. <laughs> so now you can see my dark matter here. So what's happening is the very dense piece of dark matter has gravity because it still has mass. And so the gravity from the dark matter is pulling the scissors in towards the center. But the scissors can't interact with the dark matter through any other force except gravity. So that's why the scissors just fall right through it and then bounce back and forth and back and forth until they reach the center of gravity of the dark matter. So you can see the only way we know this dark matter is here is because it's pulling on things around the room with gravity. And that's actually the way that we know that dark matter even exists is because it pulls on galaxies. So we were able to calculate how much mass should be in our own Milky Way galaxy or how much mass should be in our neighboring galaxies around us. And what we found was according to the mass that they had, they shouldn't be able to stay together like they do. And that's because at the center of every galaxy is an extremely big black hole. And the black hole has a lot of mass and all the stars of the galaxy are orbiting around this black hole. But according to gravitational theory, it should be that all of the stars that are closest to the center of the galaxy should orbit the black hole faster. So the stars that are near the center of the galaxy should be spinning around that black hole really fast because the pull of gravity is stronger there. And so in order to stay in orbit, they would have to be moving faster. And then the stars that are on the outskirts of the galaxy, they should be moving really slow because the pull of gravity should be less there. But what we found was that's not what happens when we observe other galaxies. We see that the stars that are towards the center have a specific orbital speed and then the stars that are really far away orbit at about that same speed. So no matter where they are in relation to the center of the galaxy, they all just kind of go around it with the exact same speed. So what we observe in these galaxies is that these stars that are way off on the outskirts of the galaxy, their orbital speed is too high, so they should just fly off into the universe. But that's not what happens. So it seems like there needs to be more matter in that galaxy than what we're currently accounting for that's holding on these stars on the outskirts of the galaxy that are going too fast. There has to be more matter than all of these stars in that galaxy and the black hole in the center. There has to be something else holding it to stop it from flying off into space. And that something else is called dark matter. Now this dark matter, it has to be something that doesn't interact with these stars in the galaxy except through gravity. Now we do know a little bit about dark matter. We know that it's non-baryonic. So we know it's not made out of the same stuff that stars are made out of or anything in the periodic table. So what is it made of? Well, the thing is, we don't know. All we know is that it's there and it has gravity. And what's even weirder about this is that this dark matter isn't just some abstract thing somewhere in some faraway galaxy, but it truly is all around us. Now the dark matter in our own Milky Way galaxy is just passing through us right now. In fact, all these particles of dark matter are continually just flying through us, but we never actually feel them. We only feel their effects of gravity on our own star. And we also know that it doesn't interact strongly with the electromagnetic force. So basically that means that you can't touch it and also you can't shine light on it. The only reason you can feel normal matter is because the electrons in your hand are getting repelled by the electrons in the other thing, and so through the electromagnetic force, you feel it and you can't move through it. But something that doesn't have the electromagnetic force, that means that you could just pass right through it. 
For example, through the nuclear reactions in the sun, there's these particles called neutrinos that shoot off of the sun. And there's billions of these neutrinos passing through us and the earth every single second. But you don't actually feel these particles passing through you. And the reason we can't feel these neutrinos being emitted from the sun is because neutrinos don't have an electric charge. And so that means they can just pass through the electron field around the atoms in our hands and our body and it just passes right through us. The only way we could feel them is that if a specific neutrino were to hit the nucleus of one of our atoms. But most of the volumes of atoms are just empty space. And so it's very, very, very unlikely that a neutrino from the sun would hit the nucleus of any atom in our body or even any atom in the entire Earth. And so it's more likely that most of those neutrinos just pass right through the Earth. So could it be that dark matter is just made of neutrinos? Well, the answer is no, because we actually know from cosmology the upper limit of the number of neutrinos in our universe. And it doesn't even come close to accounting for the amount of dark matter in the universe. So even though neutrinos could account for some of this missing matter in galaxies, it's not even close to accounting for the full amount of missing matter. So that means that there's some other candidate that still is dark matter that we don't know about yet. Now there are a number of good theoretical candidates for what dark matter actually is. Some of those include axions and neutralinos. Now one good thing about dark matter is that it's not some far distance away from us. It's actually right here, right now, all around us. But we can't feel it or interact with it. Most of the dark matter of our own galaxy is distributed kind of in a halo around the Milky Way. So that means that our Earth is actually passing through this dark matter right now. But because we can't interact with it through the electromagnetic force and probably only through the weak force, that means that we can't detect it at all. The same reason it's so hard to detect these neutrinos coming off of the sun. Now if dark matter is made of one of these theoretical particles called an axion, sometimes spontaneously axions will split into two photons and then come back together. So if we were able to detect this spontaneous formation of two photons, then that means we could be able to theoretically detect if these axions exist. But the hard part is trying to set up an experiment in which you can detect if two photons suddenly came into existence or not. And so far we haven't been able to prove that that's actually happening. So we don't know if axions actually exist and are the thing that dark matter is made out of. Now the other cool thing about dark matter is that because dark matter has mass and has gravity, that means that you can actually form dark matter black holes. And it could actually be that most of the dark matter in our universe is in the form of a black hole. Now we actually wouldn't even be able to tell whether a black hole is made out of dark matter or regular matter. A dark matter black hole and a regular black hole would be completely indistinguishable from one another. Because the only way that we know black holes even exist is through their gravity alone. The only force that we can feel of a black hole is gravity. And most of the time scientists have thought of dark matter as being distributed kind of evenly in a halo around a galaxy. But it could actually be that dark matter can clump together and form things the size of planets. So there could actually be dark matter planets in our galaxy. But the thing is, we would never be able to see these planets or even interact with them. We could only feel their gravity. And in that case, it would be like stepping onto an invisible Earth where you just fell through it and then fell back and forth and back and forth and eventually rested at the center of this dark matter planet. But the only way that dark matter planets could exist is if these particles were able to interact with each other some way. So they'd have to have some way of repelling one another or else they'd always just form a black hole. For example, the only reason that normal matter doesn't always just form a black hole is because the electromagnetic force, once everything starts falling together and compressing together, the electromagnetic force keeps it apart. Now I should point out something so you don't get confused with these terms. Dark matter is not antimatter and dark matter is also not negative mass. All of these things are different. And I should mention that I didn't actually have a piece of dark matter at the beginning there. If you couldn't tell, that was a simulation of what it would be like if you had kind of a planet or a clump of dark matter in space and you were to drop something towards it. 
And I'd like to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Brilliant's daily problems helps make learning a daily habit. Every day they publish several problems that provide a quick and fascinating view into math, logic, science, engineering, or computer science. Each of these daily problems provides you with the context and framework that you need to tackle it, so that you learn the concepts by applying them. And then if you like the problem and want to learn more, there's a course quiz that explores the same concept in greater detail. So if you like learning and like my channel, then head over to Brilliant to sign up for free. But if you'd like to sign up for their premium subscription, then click the link in my description for 20% off of their premium subscription. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos out and head over to theactionlab.com to check out the Action Lab subscription box and leave me any comments or questions that you have in the comment section and I'll try to get to them. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.